Hello and welcome to a first look at The Wandering Village. This game went into early access on September 14th? Yeah, 14th. So probably about three days ago from when you're watching this, roughly. Uh, this is a new city builder, early access, like I said. Uh, similar vein to Frostpunk, or, uh, which I have played, and then a game I have not played called Timberborn. Uh, which I, I was like aware of, but just missed the boat on. The game is, I think, $23. It's 10% off until September 28th. So you got about two weeks to pick up the game for uh, like a dollar fifty off. Not two fifty off. Not too bad. Uh, and yeah, this is by a studio named Stray Fawn. And they have other games that they've made. They've made two other games. Or no, three other games. Sorry. It's, uh, I, I haven't heard of them. They're called Nimbatus, Niche, and Retimed. Maybe you've uh, checked one of those out before. I have not. I never heard of this before this game. So, uh, yeah, I think that this game seems interesting, but it is very early. And also it's, so City Builders are games. I want to preface this by saying that City Builders are games that are very uh, in-depth, I guess, is a, is a thing, a way to put it. Like... I could never accurately represent a game of Frostpunk at one hour in, right? That's not possible for me. Uh, because of course it's not. The The depth of gameplay is vast when you get into the end game uh, sections. So I want to start off by saying that. Uh, so just so we're on the same page. I've played about an hour, which is longer than I normally do. I like to play like 20 minutes usually of these games when I get into them. But I played like an hour to get used to it. And I, I feel I have a good understanding and enough to show you the mechanics of the game and the basics at the beginning, but I cannot speak to the long term, what it's like when you're in the end game, etc, etc. So bear that in mind when looking at this game, and also bear in mind that this is like version 0 0.1. This game entered early access two days ago, so uh, it's probably got a long ways to go. I, and we cannot speak on how often they'll be developing, updating, etc. But you can join their Discord if you are so inclined. All right, with all that out of the way, let's get into it. So first of all, I'll take a look at the options menu. I actually haven't looked at these yet, so uh, it's it's always a new exciting moment for me when I get to click on a new audio settings menu and see if it's what I want. Rate it one to five. Uh, but so you got general general settings. You got your languages here. I'm just I'm not gonna try to read them off. It's just it's too much. I've given up. There's a lot of them. Damn. Apparently, if you want to join in, if you know another language and want to help with translations, you can do that as well, so keep an eye out. You can also adjust the sensitivity of scrolling around the map. Audio. It's like a, it's like a three. Yeah, it's like a three. Three out of five. Sorry, not three out of ten. It's a three out of five. You gave me a number, and you gave me a slider, and the slider is not too bad. It's, it's a three out of five. Where are my arrows to give me exactly what I want? Uh, you know what? Don't worry about it. Graphic settings, I haven't had any problems. My PC is a little older uh, and I have not run into any trouble running it on uh, 1920 by 1080, high high texture quality, etc. It's not a particularly intense game. Uh, one thing I do not know, I don't think this game has controller support. Let me double check the Steam page. This game does not have controller support natively and it doesn't look like it has Steam Deck support either. So this is a keyboard and mouse only game. And then if you are a if you're a content creator, you can do Twitch integration and it'll grab people's names from chat for your villagers, which is pretty cool. I always like to see that. Okay, so uh, let's get into the actual game itself now. So two things. You, I believe, from what I understand, there is no end. Like in Frostpunk, you're playing a scenario to its completion. This is a purely endless game. Uh, so with that, you can save and load. I have... Uh, three saves from the time that I've played of this game over the last two days. Looks like it auto-saves as well as you can manually save at whatever time. Uh, and then new game, there are three difficulties. There is novice, which is you're starting out. Uh, there is adept, which is, you know, you've played a little bit. And then there's veteran, which is your hardcore. Now, uh, what I found is that me being who I am, I started a game on veteran uh, as my first run because, of course, I did. And you don't get a tutorial if you do that. Like, it just skips the tutorial. I have now played through most of the tutorial. So, 
I'm gonna run an adapt run. You can also customize your difficulty. Ah, here you go. You can turn it on. You can turn on villager death, onbu death, and manual saving on or off. So, from what I understand, if you were to turn off onbu and villager death, you would be unable to lose the game because the lose condition is either onbu or you die. Like all of your people die or onbu dies. So you could. This is like a creative mode sort of thing where you get to just kind of build forever, which is cool. Good to see. Uh, always, always an advocate of stuff like that. Uh, you get to name your save files if you're so inclined. I do not. I will just figure it out. Uh, you know what? No, let's, let's make this one YouTube save. And let's get to it. I'll let the cutscene play. Driven from our homes by the toxic spores, we kept wandering, looking for shelter. But not in our wildest dreams did we imagine what we would find. Yeah, so uh, the gist of this game, you'll get it very quickly here once we get in. Uh, the city is, the game is named The Wandering Village because uh, you are on a big boy who is wandering. So you got three views here. This is your like on his back view. And then this is your local view, which you can look around. I haven't seen anything in this other than uh, you can build i assume later on you can build the horn blower to try and move him the doctor to heal him and then the feeding trebuchet to feed him and if you zoom out again this is the overall map like this is the world map here and you can once we have researched it you can uh go out to these little nodes i have never actually gotten to a point where i've researched this but you can also see like up ahead here's where he's gonna go to sleep here's some stuff for him to eat and then here's some more dangerous biomes. Okay. So, and you don't have to scroll. I'm using the scroll wheel to do this, but you can also click and it's also key bound if you want to just zoom out with four, five, and six. Other than that, because, you know, it's a new, new video game. We got a lot of interface to go over. In the top left is our resources. This is berries, wood, stone, and water, which we can also see on the ground here. This is our starting stuff. There's a research tab, which we can open up. Here's a little research tree. Uh, not too bad, all things considered here. Uh, and then you also have the resources area and the onbu area. So there's a decent amount of stuff to research. If this feels like... Uh, cancel, please. Oh god, I don't know how to cancel. Thank you. If this feels like it's way too much for you, uh, don't worry. Especially the research tree. They have recommended research uh, things for you to do. You'll see it when we get the research hub up. But there's also a detail on food, so this will this will show us with arrows at a glance if we're gaining or losing food, and then if you click on it like this, you can see raw food, processed food, and then in the last 24 hours how much was eaten versus how much was produced. You can see your villagers here. Uh, the smiley face is how happy they are, and the happiness corresponds to this productivity number. You also can see... Uh, how many people you have and if they are unemployed or employed and if they are like what they do as their job so like workers builders harvesters carriers etc uh, game speed controls there are four and when you see the white border around the screen that means it's paused you can see it also means that you can see the play pause in the top right uh, you can go up to uh, 4x speed here and then at any time you can open up the notebook here which shows you this is all of the information you would need about the game as well as some uh, some backstory stuff if you're interested in that you can read about onbu and all of that there's also a way to report bugs right here in a menu of course uh, and then the last little bit we got to talk about is temperature humidity and toxicity the toxicity affects your people and also onbu I'm gonna turn the game down a touch, by the way. It just feels a, the music feels a little too loud to me. There we go. Hopefully, I wasn't like completely drowned out. I haven't figured out what the I don't know what the BPM means. To be honest with you, I think it's just a cool stat. But maybe it'll show off like, oh, he's dying. Careful. Uh, so all of that covered. You can also see uh, the poison level, his hunger level, and his sleepiness on the right here. And those will be filling up as we go. Oh, and you can see his health. Cool. Uh, so, now what do we actually do here? Well, in the bottom, of course, we have our actual interface. So, 
Uh, the middle button is the building menu, and then it's separated into tabs, like so. And then uh, this is the harvesting tool. So what we do is we, we click this, and we say, uh, I want to harvest only fully grown objects, and we want to harvest some trees, because we're going to need some wood. Well, actually, let's, let's not do the harvesting yet. Let's start by getting housing gun going. So for, first things first, let's get some housing. All right, all right, all right. I'm going to put my... I'm gonna, I like to make like a city square sort of idea. Right, so you just, it's very simple, just click and drop. However, you can shift-click to build multiple. Each of these tents holds two people, and I think costs five wood, so if we build six of them, we will house uh, most of our population, but not everyone. Now, while those guys are doing that, I'm going to let this go on 1x. So we're going to go ahead and set some harvesting. So we need wood to build more houses. So I'm going to say harvest only fully grown options and harvest trees. So you can set it to harvest all harvest stone or harvest trees. I'm going to say harvest trees. And I'm just going to click and drag. And now the remainder of our people will go and harvest all of these trees. The, the ones with the little balloon on them are the ones that we're going to harvest. And we'll let them go ahead and do that. I'm going to set it to 3x speed for a little bit. The people are complaining, oh no, I'm homeless. Whatever. Yeah, the other, the people who finish their job over here, they're gonna go over and help out, etc, uh, etc. Et it flows pretty well, I think. Put in two more houses. And now we will have enough housing for everyone. Now following this, we need to deal with food, because of course we do. This is a city building game. Uh, so there's two main sources of food. I mean, so we can go through the tabs real quick, actually. Let's do that. So this is like the building stuff. We got tents, worker posts, and research buildings. This is storage. So as you can see, our stuff is just kind of thrown around on the ground. When you build storage, uh, specifically when we have things that are producing, so like when we get to this air well, for example, which produces water for us, it can only hold a certain amount of water. And then when it fills up, it'll stop producing. They won't just like throw it out on the ground. So we need to build storage facilities to actually hold the stuff that's being produced. And then, yeah, this is food, water, uh, etc. This is for higher level resources, which we'll get to in a minute. Or no, this is for higher level resources, carpentry and stone cutting. This is for, I don't actually know what this is for. I think that this is for the raw resources is for clearing the, or building sawmills to clear the giant trunks and boulders, uh, quarries for boulders. But yeah, then we have process stuff, which we use to make higher level buildings. Uh, these create wood planks from wood and stone from stone. Let's say it's stone slabs, yeah. The mycologist, which creates mushrooms, which you use to feed Onbu, but he also feeds himself. And then this is for fighting health, and this tab is for exploration. And it'll, it kind of flows, I think, pretty well. It took me a little bit to get used to it without the tutorial, but I got there. And then I went and I played the tutorial anyway. So when you don't have the resources, like we don't have what we need for a berry gatherer, but this is going to be our first uh, plan, is going to be to place our... Uh, our food, our first food thing. So you can uh, gather berry bushes like naturally, we can just tag them for harvest, but they'll be destroyed. Whereas if you build and man a berry gatherer, they will be har harvested and not uh, exhausted. So you can see when we hover this, it shows us our efficiency and it shows what it'll have in its range. So we have a 31% efficiency if we place it here. If we were to put it further back, yeah, 4% because it's only hitting one of them, for example. Now, I saw another area up here that looked kind of promising for the berries. Let's see if we can get a good one in here. No, it looks like, and it's not so bad because it's close. Yeah, 31% is probably what we're going to get for efficiency on the berries, and that's fine. So when a building has something wrong with it, it will put up this flag. So like it's, still, it's telling me here with the red flag, we don't have enough resources. That's fine. We'll get them. I get, it's just good to be able to blueprint things out because following this, I need a farm. Now, the farms specifically need to be placed on grass, which I'm going to place here. Uh, it's, oh, it's a little strange how they work to me. Uh, I will show you when it's finished. Uh, you'll, but you're gonna think, oh, well, you're wasting space over here, and you're right, but not really. And I'll show you how it works. Let's go ahead and let it go back to going. Uh, I need stone, I believe, for these. Yeah, I need 30 stone, and I don't have enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna harvest some stone and let's say, let's say I wanted to get this stone faster, right? Let's say, oh man, I'm running out, I don't have enough stone. There's this tool here, the priority tool, and what you can do is you can set this stone to high priority 
which will then say, okay, like you saw this person here if you were watching, they dropped what they were doing, which was building this tent to come over and harvest this stone. So that's how you can say, because what, what I ended up having was I would queue up a bunch of actions and because of how the priority system would work, I would just not ever have my actions complete. Like they would just stay in limbo because something else kept taking it over. Like it was like, oh, I, I'll harvest these trees here. I'll just set it to be done. And it would never finish is what I ended up having happen to me. And it's fine because there's a priority tool for that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set two air wells to go. I, I'm, I'm not doing the shift to click to build because I'm being lazy, but I can if I want to. Uh, and then what else do I need? I kind of just want to blueprint out the the entire city here. So we're going to make material storage, which stores raw materials, up to 30 of each. This is going to be for our wood and stone. We'll put two of these bad boys down, and then we're going to do a water tank and a pantry. And while I'm at it, I may as well add the roads. The roads, you don't need to make the roads, but they just make your people move faster while they're going around. Probably, so out, out of the gate here, my only real major complaint with how the game plays is that I want, let me actually check before I say this, because sometimes I'll say something like this and it'll just be a setting in the, uh, okay, it is not. What I want to be able to do, because it's click and drag, but it's a left click, I want to be able to right click and drag because I cannot click and drag while trying to place a building, right? So like if I'm trying to place this road down, I can't move my camera while placing it. So you have to do it sort of modularly like that. And I don't love that. It's not a huge, like it's not a deal breaker, don't get me wrong. But I would prefer it if it were just a little different, you know? I'm gonna harvest up some trees. Now you'll notice these little spikes here. These are the Onbu spikes. When you harvest them, it lowers Onbu's trust. That's what it says. I don't actually know what it means, so I'm probably going to end up harvesting them. They give stone when you harvest them. And it's not that big of a deal. You know what I'm going to do, actually? Hold on. I, I need to... Can I... Yeah, so if you, if you queue up a bunch of harvesting that you don't want, you can cancel it like this. There's a cancellation tool. You can kind of see what I'm saying, I, I imagine by now, with the whole I would like to be able to right click because when you're doing things in large areas like this, it would be nice to be able to just like click and drag and cover it all. But it's not like a deal breaker, you know? Okay, so I want to make worker posts. What these do is they basically let you manage your workers. So I'm gonna put one here. And I'm going to put one here. What I've, I, I'm not sure that this is the correct thing to do. I'm going to set these to maximum priority so that they hopefully get the resources first. But what they do is they make it so that worker, you can assign workers to them and then those workers will carry out a job like, uh, for example, I can set builders there and then there will be three workers who are dedicated to building. Because right now the workers just kind of do whatever without any real regard for what what should be done yes all right so farms completed when you finish a farming based building i'm going to keep pausing to show things off by the way uh so bear with me on that uh, when you do this you have to declare the area that you want them to farm in which is going to be this area here uh, do not harvest this berry bush if there's something in the way when you say it it's going to go and clear it out and i would like to make sure that we do not kill that berry bush because that's part of our food. And now the people who go in here to work, they will just produce... Uh, I'm gonna make this a little... It just looks nice. I don't think it matters. But they're gonna go in here and they're gonna work on this. But they need water to farm. Which is why we, we'll need wood for this. But first I want to get these built up. But everyone's making roads. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to 4x speed now for a little bit. Hopefully you're getting the flow of it. It's, uh, it's pretty simple and pretty straightforward, but it did take me a little bit to get used to it. And like I said, I can't really speak to the depth of this game. I don't know how the end game is going to be, but I'll tell you about one of my concerns right away. Uh, there's not room to expand on this map, right? There's a very clear finite amount of area and finite amount of resources. So I don't know how the game is going to deal with that problem particularly. But it is definitely a problem of I am going to run out of space eventually. 
If this is an endless game, I cannot imagine a run being more than like two hours before you just completely run out, is what I see here. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this area here now, and I've put this worker post down, and I'm going to say, set it to harvesters, fill out five harvesters, and I'm going to harvest fully grown trees. Can't really, you can't drag off of Onbu to, to show it off, I see. But I'm just going to harvest all of this, and then these five workers are going to be dedicated to harvesting in this area. Now, you can't really dedicate it like that, but it's going to help. I think it helps me compartmentalize because, I don't know, it just makes sense to me to do it like that, honestly. And we should have, yes, we got the berry bush. So I need to, once I have some wood, I need to have someone go build the well next. I have the stone, I need some wood, and we're starting to farm up some beets. But as we see here, I'll review the UI with you now. As you can see here, we're now negative 16 food in a 24 hour period. Uh, which is probably wrong. My people probably ate, and that consumption number is going to dip a little bit. Uh, but I'm not 100% sure. I don't know how much each person eats, for example, but we'll see. You can keep it, you can see it going up even though the number shows it going down, you know? But then we're gonna go ahead and set these guys to harvest, and we're gonna go harvest stone. Now, I don't think I need so many people dedicated to it. I'm actually gonna pull two of them off. I, in my mind, I would like to make like a center area here, like with a worker post and make a builder section and a like carrier section and dedicate all of that, but you just don't have the people to do that starting out. Uh, so, you know, it's not a big issue. We're gonna work on building up the air well now and that'll generate us some water so that we can farm more efficiently. And the water production will be I impacted by the humidity level in the area and you can zoom out to see, oh hey, we're in a jungle. It'll also say in the bottom left when we get somewhere interesting like that. And we can look ahead and see like, oh, here's where we were. Here's where we're going. Up ahead, we're going to get some nomads who are, going to, who are going to want to join our city. And it all flows pretty well. The game looks very nice. If I were to tell you I have any reservations, which I do, I do have... I, I fear for the long term of this game is all. I don't know what's going to happen in like three hours on a run like this, right? I'm gonna go ahead and grab a research building. Let's get into the research tree. I feel like a game like this is always going to benefit more from being scenario based instead of an endless survival idea. And so I hope that the direction they go is having scenarios that you have to survive in the same vein as like a Frostpunk, right? But, you know, you'll, it's just, you'll have to see. It's always hard to say. Hey, look, Onbu's gonna stop and eat. If you watch, he'll actually, he actually will stop and like play an eating animation and all of that. It's very cool to see, I think, anyway. What do I need? I just need wood, right? I'm gonna put another person on harvesting duty over there. We're gonna harvest all of this, but there is no way that I can see to sustainably harvest uh, wood right now. So, you know, it is what it is. Are there always so many berries over here? Did I just not notice this? How many, what's my efficiency? 54%! Whoa! Give me some berries, brother. I do feel like food is an off, often a like major issue, uh, from what I understand. It seems like food is the big killer in this game, because no matter how many people... So you'll see, right? I, de I designated all of this space, but they will only ever really plant directly around the building. And I don't really know why, but I'm gonna go ahead and clear this road. Because I would like to plot this space, just in case it matters, you know? I don't really know if it matters or not. I also think that a game like this, uh, I'm, I'm just gonna point out things that Frostpunk has that this game doesn't often. Uh, and I, I think that that's not a big deal, because it's good to look at other games like Frostpunk and go, okay, how could this game uh, benefit, right? And I think that having uh, a tab that you can click on that just shows you at a glance, here's your food income, here's your water income, etc. I think that that's almost crucial for city builders over time. Like, I really need to be able to click something and just see, okay, I'm gaining this much food, I'm gaining this much water, here's where my food's coming from, etc. Mountain biome. So the weather is going to become colder 
which means that our farming is going to be a little worse overall, I think. And the normal humidity is going to not lower, but bring our water production back to normal. And all of that is fine. I'm not too concerned, honestly. Yeah, I'd like to get into the mid game, but we are kind of just... What's this? Fresh air, free from any toxins? Uh, nice. We didn't have any toxins to begin with, but you know what? Sweet. Love to hear it. Okay, so these guys are going to finish up gathering the stone that I told them to gather pretty soon. I feel like I just need... I need way more wood constantly, but I guess I blueprinted out a ton of stuff, so... It's not all that shocking, is it? What I'll do is I'll... Because we're done harvesting all the stone over here. What I'll do is I'll just set this uh, wood to be gathered as well. And again, they're not necessarily going to be... Uh, working out of this and back. However, like, they're not going to be working out of this post specifically to these trees. People from over here will come over and such as well. Uh, you know what? You know what the problem is I'm seeing? My workers are just carrying resources around. Here, I'm going to priority all of these trees so that they stop fucking around. Just go cut trees down. Someone else can carry that shit around. What are we doing? We're minus three on food somehow. I've got all of this food production. We're still losing food. It's crazy. I'd like to get the research on the road and things like that as well, because, like, I, I'm, I'm getting close. Pardon me. I'm, I'm getting close to about where I want to be for the video. Yeah, so here's here's the part where they show you. When, you. when you finish research, it pops this up, and it tells you... Here are the two things that you could research. Now... It's not just these two things. This is what the game recommends to start out. But if you want, you can open it up and you can go, Ah, oh, you know what? I actually want to go to the cactus plantation. Or you know what? I want the dung collector. So the game does a good job of guiding you, I think. We're going to research the kitchen. The kitchen... Well, actually, we have a decision here. So yeah, occasionally we'll get events. Uh, this is just, do we want to bring in the small group of nomads? Yes, I want more people. Thank you. We got three new people, which means I need two new tents. And the kitchen requires wood planks and stone slabs. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put in a carpenter and a stone cutter. I'll put the stone cutter here. Yeah, it will just destroy that stone. It's fine. And what these will do is they will take raw stone and raw wood, which we have, and they will turn them into stone stone and wood slabs and planks, respectively. Uh, now, what I'll probably do is I'll probably have one person join the berry gathering team on the left. Like, I could just add more people to uh, what I have here. However, what I'm thinking is we have 54% efficiency here and 27% efficiency here. So I'm probably just going to shut this berry gatherer down. I think somewhere along the line I accidentally destroyed some of their berry bushes, uh, is what it looks like. So I'm just going to go ahead and shut that down and move the berry harvesting over here to the 58 percenter. I don't know if it being cold actually does anything other than make my people a little uncomfortable. Yeah, and you can see here, this air well is full, uh, but so we need people need to go move the water over but I just don't have anyone available yet. Now, now it's going to go back to producing because someone's taking it. I'm going to go ahead and... Because this seems like it's going to be a problem. I'm going to make a worker post. I said I wanted to do this. I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to make a worker post and designate a few people specifically to moving things around in the center of the city. Although, realistically... Uh, let, me, let me cancel this. What I think, actually, is I should just set this one to be carriers because i have them set specifically to harvesting temporary temperature decreases might affect the growth of your crops yeah that checks out yeah so i have a bunch of people set to harvest but not a bunch of people set to carry stuff around that seems to be the problem and what we're going to come into as a problem here is i don't have enough stone i'm gonna set a second person to harvest stone i'm gonna harvest an on spike he's gonna go er, i don't like it but like i whatever dude i need stone and we'll also harvest this stone. And not too bad. I guess the trees, it looks like the trees are regrowing, right? Because I'm pretty sure I tagged all of these trees to be cut down. 
So maybe the renewable resources for the trees front is they just regrow, which would make sense. All right, but now, now we're kind of just chilling. It is freezing out. And it tells us what that means here. Okay, so we're, we're good. I want to get to like a kitchen and then probably call it a day on this video. I feel like you have a pretty good grasp on what the game is now, though. Beyond this, there is like, so uh, in the future, what I know comes up is you need to create like an herbalist and you can research medicine because eventually toxicity becomes a problem and your people start to uh, die of poisoning. And so I know that that happens in the game as time goes on, but yeah, like the balancing act is hard for me to show off to you in a 30 minute first impressions video. I have a, a what I feel is a decent grasp on the game at this point, but from here it's just learning what happens next, basically. And I feel like at this point you probably have a good understanding of what's going on in this game and if this looks like something you would want to play or not. I think that for me, for city builders, what it comes down to is how clean is the UI, how easy is it for me to do things and understand what's going on, and how satisfying is it to manage everything, right? And so far, I am, I'm pretty positive on this game, especially as an early access title. I have uh, hope that it will expand to be something even better than this in the future. I, I think that this is a very strong start to the game, though. It looks like a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun so far. And I'm probably going to be playing a little bit more of it on Twitch. If you want to check that out, you can. I'm, I'm looking if there's anything else to show off here before I wrap up. Because I think I am going to wrap it up here. I feel like you have a decent understanding of everything that's going on now. I mean, where's my kitchen? Oh, it's not researched yet. Let's wait for the first research to finish and then we will wrap up. So I'm going to go ahead and 3 exit here. You can see actually food is just a major problem, but I think that the kitchen will be the answer to that major problem. We are slowly running out of food. Let's try putting another person on the farm. Yeah, we don't have enough uh, workers, so we'll transfer one of the these people over. But that, that's another thing that I think would be good, right? I think that it would be good to have... Employed. Ah, these workers, the harvesters have nothing to do, I see. Because there's nothing left to harvest, because I didn't tag anything for him. Okay, let's harvest some trees. And let's harvest... Give me the on... I'm gonna harvest... I've harvested a few on boost spikes. I probably shouldn't harvest anymore, but I'm also running out of stone, I fear. Like, I don't see any stone anywhere. I guess that we could just send them on a fucking odyssey over to here. Yeah, I don't really care. They got nothing better to do. But yeah, I think that my number one wish for this game would be some sort of a panel that lets you just click on it and go, okay, food, here's where my workers are employed. Like, even just something where I can click on it and go, because it shows me employment here. 19 employed, two carriers, five harvesters. What I would rather this showed me is 19 employed, uh, and then show me like, was it three? Show me six in food, uh, like four in processing which would be 10, and then 7 in general workage, like harvesting and building, it puts you to 17, and then 2 in research, right? That's how I would prefer this to be broken down, of course, but... There's also a crossroads coming up, and I should tell you about the scavenging as well, which I haven't actually made it to, but on the map there are these uh, events that we can go to, basically, and I haven't made it to this yet, but... Uh, when you research in the research hub here, if I show it in the research tree, actually, I'll just show it to you when we finish this one. Back. I'll just show it to you here. What there is, is the scavenger hunt. So you can send workers out to those nodes when you have this, and they will basically just go on a quick little adventure and come back and grab whatever they have, whatever's there at the event. There's also a crossroads. Let me go to the crossroads, because I don't know what this is. I assume... Uh, my understanding is that you get to suggest to Onbu what to do, and there's kind of a coin flip on if he actually does it or not. And we can make a kitchen. Ah, but I can't. I didn't. Oh, I didn't space this out well. I guess this is like at the end of the day. I should leave this area open for more houses. This is the housing area, and then we branch out from there. However, I don't. 
really see my people going to their houses, so maybe in the future I would just put my housing off, like, at the edge of the map, because there's no reason for them to be here in their houses to begin with. And I don't care about the aesthetic. Because, like, the, the aesthetic of it is something, right? It's like, oh, town center, storage, water, and then food, and then we kind of build out from there. Harvesting at the edges, etc. It doesn't really bother me, actually, now that I see it. Uh, I think that in the future I would probably just set it to, like, I, I would set five people to be harvesters and I would just harvest the whole map. Because it doesn't, it's not like it's that big of a deal that they're walking that far out, is it? I don't know, maybe it matters, maybe it doesn't. Oh, so at the crossroads, uh, I didn't have anything to do there, he just kind of fucked off, I get you. Ah, but you see, if I could, so there's a hornblower you can build that tries to suggest to Onbu what to do. And... Uh, if you could, if you cared, you could go to the feeding spot or the sleeping spot. Uh, I see. And then sometimes if you don't go to a specific sleeping spot, Onbu will just sleep somewhere where there is poison. And then if you don't feed him, uh, he'll probably start to take damage or something. I get it. So there's a bit of a balancing act there. Alright. And now we're in a jungle biome. Cool. Alright, yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna wrap it up here now. I think this is a good enough, uh, showing... Yeah, Onbu yawns. He's very sleepy. I understand now. Yeah. Overall, I think this game is pretty cool. It's definitely, if this doesn't uh, strike you, if you like city builders, but you're worried about the long term, definitely keep an eye on this game. Throw it on your wish list, etc. Not fresh air. Very nice. Because I think there's a lot of potential. This could be an, a a great entry in the city builder genre. The genre. Sure. I do think that the animations that play can be a little jarring when you look at him like sitting down and such but you know nonetheless all right yeah thanks for watching i'm gonna wrap it up i i think that this game is cool i will be playing a little more of it on twitch uh feel free to check it out you can head over there link in the description etc uh don't forget to leave me a like subscribe if you want to see more and i will see you in the next one it's a good one